So Stephen, you'd mentioned that at some point we're probably going to talk about pricing, so we might as well just bring it up and talk about pricing. All right, so some of the feedback that we get from the general public is that the cost of medical cannabis in New York is just exorbitant, it's too expensive, it's easier to get illegal marijuana as opposed to being legal. So that being said, obviously it's not, in today's day and age, currently not covered by insurances, it's a cash business. Can uh, each of you sort of talk about uh, what it is that your companies are doing to help people that are really struggling to afford medical cannabis? At Columbia Care specifically, we um, offer a discounted program for any patients uh, on financial, needing financial services or on Medicaid, veterans, um, Medicare, seniors. So they all receive a 15% discount. Um, we also have an adopt a patient program and that's where dispensaries from other states, our dispensaries specifically, will basically host a patient in another state and pay for their medication. So it's it's a charity um, situation and it, it's for specific patients that really, really need the help. Um, and that's what we do at Columbia Care. So let me, so just to clarify, so, and I understand that, you know, Columbia Care, the parent company, you have uh, operations in other states. So the dispensaries that preceded Columbia Care in New York that are now financially doing well will be able to financially support patients here in New York that cannot afford their medication. That is fantastic. I love hearing that. That is absolutely wonderful. Okay, and um, if, if both of you can just also talk about what we're doing for folks that really can't afford the medication. Yeah, I, the, the other thing before while we're on pricing that I think people don't recognize are just in between like individual companies here in New York um, as well as black market is the, the concept of potency. And so, uh, you know, they see that they can get a whole bag of flour and that seems like a lot on the street. And if you actually were to go for black market oil, it's not that different than what we're charging, but you can guarantee what's in it. You know, it's pharmaceutical grade and it's regulated in New York. So the price is really not that difference it's just that it's small it's it's extract and so people you know they see a huge amount of flour that they can carry home and they think they're getting more for less money and that's not really the case so that's the first thing I want to say about this whole misconception on potency and even you know uh, potency within individual products they there's this whole concept of people not understanding active milligram content and so they see a big bottle of a liquid and they think they're getting more same with like laundry detergent so they used to dilute la laundry detergent down and you had to go with home with like gallons of it because it was all water and so I, I think that, that that is a huge point of education um, but specifically for discounts what uh, attains doing to that's just a side topic on that but um, <laughs> uh, for discounts we just implemented the first lo customer loyalty program uh, in New York State so what we have is if you come and purchase uh, you get cash towards your next visit and um, so it's based on your spend, how much cash you get towards your next visit, and those are ongoing. Um, and we also have a 10% discount for Medicare, Medicaid, senior citizens, veterans, and people on disability. So, so really, they get bags of flour this big? I know. Oh, that's a lot of flour. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. Where's the one at? I'm there. I know, right? You want to see that big bag, right? Hey, Dr. Dahmer. Here you go. So we also offer a discount for financial hardship. I love the idea of an adoption program, and so I'm going to try to brainstorm that. Um, I think it's it's important to remember that you know extraction process is expensive. This is not flour or bud, and you know a lot of money was put in to be able to extract this. Not to mention the third party testing that goes into that, and uh, so it's a more expensive product that we have in New York because of all those reasons. Um, I think far more important than that is we can offer discounts or we can even tighten up our manufacturing to cut down prices a little bit. But when you get a bottle of Oxycontin for $6 and you're paying 200 plus or even higher for a medical cannabis, there's something wrong there. Yeah. And yeah. so we really need to address this at the root because even, even $100 when you're fighting a debilitating illness and have many medical bills as it is, is a lot of money. And we hear this loud and clear from our patients that are coming to the dispensary. And the tough part, 
you know, in New York especially, is you're caught in that catch-22. And I've spoken with insurance companies to delegate or to fight for this to be covered by insurance. And no insurance, number one, is excited about going near our patients because they're sick. Insurance companies like healthy, uh, and if anybody's insurance industry, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it, it's just the truth that this is not a group of patients that an insurance company is excited to bring on board. Um, and then there's the, the added level of this being Schedule 1. Um, and so again, the federal oversight of that makes it even more difficult. Uh, but I really think that that's where, again, I was just amazed by medical cannabis because the first time in my career as a physician that we're treating illness with a medication that was brought to the table by patients that was brought to the table by advocacy uh, by patients and it just absolutely amazed me and it's going to be unfortunately and fortunately that same type of pressure that at some point we'll get this covered through a straight run program through an insurance company and that is for me in my mind going to be the best answer to the financial difficulties and and again, oh, you're kind of skipping the question, or you should offer a bigger discount. But I just, I truly believe that. And we are going to do everything that we can to make this as affordable as possible while still keeping our doors open. I just have one thing to add to that. Um, yeah, I totally agree that insurance needs to cover this. The, the good news is I, we do have a couple patients that have been able to, through the appeal process, actually get insurance to cover it. So it is coming online. Um, really? And really? not like there isn't any one specific provider. It's basically, it's taken them, you know, five or six appeals and basically like finally the, the insurance company says, you know, I give up. And then every time they go in, they purchase it again, it's five or six appeals and then finally they get the money back. But um, so it is coming. And then I, I was also excited to see in New Jersey, uh, there's uh, workers' comp is actually going to have to cover uh, medical marijuana as well. So, uh, so uh, this is not a New York specific problem either. And I think that there's a lot of hype around New York prices because it's more regulated and it is higher than other states. But this is a problem that happens nationwide that insurance is not covering this. And you see in other states, patients are spending, you know, anywhere from 300 to thousand dollars a month just to purchase medication, and, and that is not unusual. Um, and so I think that, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, people are quick to knock the New York program, but it, it's, uh, it's really a nationwide problem where this needs to be tackled as well. Thank you very much, and that is some fantastic news, but I really like what I'm hearing from all three of you, and, you know, hopefully we continue to make the program better, not only here in New York, but across the country, and all of these things hopefully come to fruition. Okay, so the two of you have referenced quality of products, whether it be testing, extraction. So uh, there's another, uh, whether it's a misconception or a, a perception, which I would like the three of you to address, but by the general public, that the quality of the medical marijuana provided here in New York is really not on par with what we can get in other states. Or And, and I see uh, what, one of the people in the audience with a big thumbs down. So so again, the perception is out there. So if, if you guys could address how we ensure quality here in New York and how does that compare to other states so certainly I know at least uh, Vireo and Columbia Care you guys are in other states so please uh, address quality of products well Columbia Care is um, in nine other states however New York is the only state um, that they're pra practicing in or having dispensaries in that that actually are under the non flowering state rule um, so we have to extract everything. We actually do think, though, that New York has the best quality out of all of our states. Um, and I think that it's a very refined product. You, it's very clean. Um, it's tested before it leaves our facility. It's also tested in Wadsworth, up in Albany, before it goes to the consumer. Um, it's also the only state that we are able to get an exact milligram dosage. And I think that is what we need to focus on in terms of really winning over the medical community. Um, doctors want to see milligram amounts and how much treats their patients. So I think that is the key there. Thank you, Tricia. I, I want to take that concept a step further, and this can go back to you or to either one of you guys. So a part of the quality of the products, there's a lot of concern, again, that I hear in the general public about 
where it all starts from. So are there genetics on the seeds that you guys use and where do the seeds come from? Let me start with that and, and then I think I'll take uh, quality into a few other different directions. Dave, can either of you start with, with answering that question? Yeah, I mean, I think quality is, is absolutely key, right? If, if we're getting a product, a medicine that doesn't have quality, then, then what are we doing? Uh, I think that quality starts, you know, at the greenhouse. Right, and, and hiring incredible horticulturists, that it's the cultivation of that plant where quality is truly going to begin. And even a step before that is genetics, which oftentimes gets in that realm of proprietary. Right? And, and we can guarantee that our horticulturists are incredibly excited about uh, genetics. And my last read is there's over 6,300 strains. Somebody might know better than, than I on that, but there's no way we're going to be able to replicate 6,300 strains when we're allowed five products. But what we can do within the constraints of the program is create five absolutely amazing products with ratios and again dosing that a physician or a provider or a nurse practitioner can understand uh, of the highest quality. And that means taking care of those plants. I put up a sign in our greenhouses that says heal. Right? And some people laugh at me, and yeah, but for me it, it goes to that extent of the energy that you're giving that plants and then through the entire tra uh, extraction process. That this is done in the best possible manner to a third party testing at Wadsworth Laboratory, where we're absolutely certain there's not heavy metals, there's not fungal elements, there's not bacteria. This has within 5% of that stated dosage. I would argue, too, that the quality of New York is incredible. And sometimes when I hear criticisms of quality, I mean, what are we talking about? We have to, we have to talk facts. Is it not helping your illness? What is your illness? What product are you using? And it's probably that we don't have you on the right product rather than the quality is not good. I think there's also kind of a misconception. Um, uh, we get a lot of comparison to the California market. Um, we're looking at going in the California market, and everyone says, you know, the oil isn't the right color or something like that. And, you know, uh, I think that people don't understand that what we're producing is a real plant. Uh, it is whole plant extract, and what you are getting is a pharmaceutical grade product. Um, we don't dilute it like you would see in California to get that golden color that everybody wants because that's not natural. Um, and, you know, what we are producing here is quality and it's medicine. And um, I do stand behind that New York has the highest quality and the highest grade of products that are available on the market for patients. Um, they, I don't think they've been seen anywhere else in the country, really, honestly. Um, this is new to be uh, the products that we are selling, you know, uh, tinctures and that kind of thing. Yes, they exist elsewhere, but not not to this level. So I, I really stand behind the New York program. That's why we got involved in this, because it's, it's a medical program, and they treat it as such. Um, and as far as genetics, I, you know, we started with 50 strains. We're only allowed to sell up to five. Um, so we really do try and find the best strains. My sister is in charge of uh, the greenhouses. We're not allowed to use pesticides. We're regulated in every aspect of our business. Everything that goes in there has to be pharmaceutical grade. So I really think that the whole manufacturing process and establishment in New York is uh, on, focused on the patient and making sure that what we are providing them is the highest quality. Thank you very much. So when you say whole plant extract, really what you're saying is other cannabinoids other than what we're required to measure and, and label, meaning THC and CBD, are not removed or, or extracted. Likewise, terpenes are also left intact and in the final product, even though it's not something that we're required to label or measure. I think I think that kind of depends on the, the organization. I, I can speak for myself, but that's what that that's what we do. There are fractionation processes, and everyone has a different, unique way of manufacturing the product. Um, I we're only allowed to use CO two, and we're only allowed to or alcohol extraction. So we're not allowed to do butane extraction that would leave like harmful solvents or residue um, that people might be inhaling, or you don't know what the side long term effects are. Um, and generally, you know, CO two and, and alcohol provide a whole plant extract. Okay, thank you very much. Now, how much of your impression is that when people think that the quality of the product isn't as good, are they potentially, the people that say that, are they potentially comparing the medical product to uh, recreational, whether it's uh, you know underground black market recreational or recreational from a legal state, whereas if you're getting a higher CBD ratio or an even CBD to THC ratio, you're not gonna have the psychogenic effects or not nearly as much. Even if you get a higher THC to CBD ratio, 
at the ratios that each of the dispensaries are actually carrying, it doesn't really compare to, you know, at a 19 to 1, 20 to 1 THC higher than CBD. That doesn't compare at all to what you might find uh, an OG Kush that might be an 80 to 1 THC to CBD. Is that what you think people are referring to when they say their products aren't on the same quality, uh, the same par quality? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, patients that have experienced other forms um, and in other markets, we're in New York, we are specifically restricted to a cap of 10 milligrams per dose. So that does limit us in terms of how high in THC our project, products are. And I think it's more about the THC content um, that it, they would label it as un, or not as good quality. However, it's really, it's just maybe not as high of a concentration that you may have been used to. But smaller concentrations have actually been very effective in terms of treating patients' pain, and we've seen that in thousands of patients so far. Thank you, Trisha. Um, so the next question I have, kind of on par with quality and what's what people may be used to either in other states or black market. So obviously here in New York, um, the way the regulations have been laid out, you can each carry and dispense up to five brands. And I know that was an, an intentional move to get away from the, you know, the, the pop culture of strains. Uh, I don't know if there's 6,300 strains, but there's certainly many, and maybe someone out there can uh, later on tell us how many strains there actually are out there. But for the, the general public, especially the general public that has cannabis experience, they're very interested in what these brands, orig the, the, the plants that originated that developed into these brands that you're carrying? Are these plants that you guys are growing and cultivating, are they sativas, are they indicas, are they hybrids? And then you also referenced uh, a number of strains that uh, I think you said 50 strains, but you know, you're know coming up with five brands. So again, are those strains, uh, are they indicas, sativas, hybrids, and what strains are you using to extract and turn into a final medical product? And then the last part of that multi-step question, is does it matter? So in New York, we really focus on THC versus CBD content. I know in the recreational world, the strains, people are interested because it's a different kind of psychogenic effect. It's a different kind of high that you get. But in the medical world, if I'm treating someone's spasticity, neuropathy, seizures, does it matter that it came from an OG Kush? It came from um, a lemon, super lemon haze? or is it really about getting the right concentrations of THC and CBD? Do any of you want to start with that? I think the sort of foundation in what New York was going to go for is, you know, uh, for instance, when we started, you know, we thought we had uh, Charlotte's Web. Um, I could call anything Charlotte's Web. It's not associated with a ratio of THC, CBD, and the underlying cannabinoids. Um, and that's what they're trying to get away from. You don't know what you're taking when you have an OG Kush, um, because anything could be named OG Kush. I, I, I could name any plant in the world that. And I think that in New York, they wanted to specifically tie a name to a ratio of THC and CBD. And I think that what really matters is THC and CBD um, for us. And the reason I, I think that is, you know, in a medical model, you can only control so much. Um, the underlying cannabinoids, the terpenes, it's got to start somewhere. And so the two most beneficial and uh, the two most common cannabinoids in any marijuana plant are THC and CBD, or the THCA, CBDA as well. Um, and so let's start somewhere. Let's start with regulating that before we open ourselves up to the rest of the world and the different cannabinoids. And, you know, they, they test for 10 others, but you, for all we, there's like 60 different cannabinoids, and, and then you get to the terpenes. So in a real medical model, you really need to start with what you can control. And so uh, that's where we focused, and um, yes, and we're always looking for what do those underlying cannabinoids do, where's the research behind that, can we do, produce a brand that really emphasizes that cannabinoid for a particular symptom relief and that kind of thing. And we're headed in that direction, but you can only do that once you have a foundation, which is really THC, CBD, and associating that with a name. So he can't call something Dolce and make it high THC um, because we have a high CBD brand called Dolce 
and that's just not going to be allowed, which means there's not going to be confusion in New York State about who's selling what and what does that mean for me as a patient. So it's really on the patients we have again that they did this, and I think from a medical perspective it's really important.